Hey, hello. I want to plead that you watch this video till the end. If you don't watch till the end, you will misunderstand what I am talking about in this video. Thank you and God bless you. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the End Time Truth Television channel. We urge you to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell icon by selecting all so that the next time we upload a new video, you will be among the first persons to be notified by Google. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, Shalom. Hello out there, God bless you. The tattoo you saw, to so many it is a lie, to some it is a moonlight story, moonlight tales, but to some who know God and what God can do, this is the truth. In the life of the pastor of Mountain of Fire Ministries, um, MFM, Pastor Olumidoni, he has spoken about his life as a child, as a child, and how that his wife, in spite of knowing that he was important, decided against all odds to marry him. The pastor, who at the age of 12 was told by his grandmother, who also was a prophetess, whom he said was the person that told him of the call of God upon his life, and that was the person that broke uh, the news of him being important. You know, in the midnight, he said it was around 2.35 a.m. And so from there, he, he tried doing so many other things that did not work until he decided to settle for the ministry work. In his uh, word, he had seen so much. And, um, you know, when we look at this kind of, uh, of story, uh, to somebody who has not seen miracle or somebody who has been in all these fake churches and have seen all that how these fake pastors you know do it looks like god doesn't do miracle again he said his grandmother told him that because of the hand of god upon his life that god was going to make him important so that he would not sexually get involved you know i wouldn't know if that was still present on his mind when he went ahead to propose to his wife and his wife with this fact was not hidden from his wife in as much as um, we don't know if he disclosed to the wife that God said it was because of the ministry. And if it was the, because of the ministry, there was actually no, no promise that while in the, in the middle of the ministry that God was going to take that away. But his wife was told officially uh, that he was important. And yet the woman went ahead to continue in the marriage. Yeah, because according to him, the both of them... Um, you know, was um, they were they were they were convinced that it was the will of God. I'm going to read to you a few portion of this interview. When he was asked about uh, his calling into ministry, he said, "I lived with my grandmother, Prophetess Moyode Abake, as a child. One day, she called me at about 2 a.m. and told me that God had given me a special grace and had commissioned me to serve Him. I was 12 years old then." She emphasized that whatever I was going to do in life, I should try as much as possible to serve the Lord with all my heart. She then revealed that it might get to a particular point when my commitment to the work of God would take me away completely from all worldly engagements. After our discussion at around 2.35 a.m., she prayed with me and informed me that I was important, even as a young boy. Of course, I had known this before, but she told me that the reason for my importance was because God had ordained me for a purpose and that if I was sexually active at that time, I might not yield to the call of God. So, since I was around 12 years old, I had known my true identity. I knew I was not an ordinary human being. You know, this grandmother, she said, was part of the uh, Joseph Ayo Babalola ministry and Oba Isaac Akinyele, um, you know, who was one time king of Ibadan. Unfortunately, she died not long after she gave him the revelation and so you know his journey has been that of plenty story but my interest in this is that is that kind of fate that made a woman to to agree to marry a man that is important there was a video i did on saturday i was on sunday on sunday where we talked about intimacy before marriage and i was telling us the story of a person who said it was good for 
Christians to get intimate before marriage because they may get together and one may discover that the, the sex organ of the other person was not what he or she wanted. Now, this one is not hidden. I've actually, I've seen this kind of a thing about two times. You know, one was the story of a girl that was born. She was not having male genitals and, you know, the, the, the organ, the, her sex organ was not sure to anybody. Her parents didn't know what, you know, what sex she was of. They didn't know if she was a boy or if she was a girl, you know. So at some point in time, when she started growing, only that there was a little opening where she could pass out urine, you know. So as she started growing now, when she got to around 15, you know, that was when she started showing signs of, uh, you know, um, uh, feminine gender you know she started growing breasts and uh but then her main sex organ was not developing at all and it got to the point where her parents rejected her actually the day somebody approached her this is not a story that was related to me i know this couple i know the two of them all right i know them in fact they are members of my church you know but i'm not here to project my church i'm just here to project the power of god so when when the man approached her first she told the man that she was not interested in marriage because she didn't want to communicate anything to the man you know knowing her herself fully well there was a pastor that she had then whom alone she told about herself and her problems you know so when the man you know persistently was asking her for marriage she said to him go and meet her pastor and so when he got to the pastor the pastor told him the reason why the girl was not forthcoming with such you know a uh, story and uh the young man was like oh that god has done it before and he told her the story the testimony of a man a 51 year old man whose manhood was like that of a, a day old baby to the point that the day the man wanted to commit suicide you know he took he took enough of gin and was ready to kill himself and somehow somebody brought him to a program and it was in that program that he was and suddenly he felt stiffness in his um underwear and then went to the toilet and found out that his manhood had shoot out he you know he came he spoke about it openly and the young man heard it and he was like if god did that he can do this one as well now wait for the story the, the girl called her mother that somebody was seeking for her hand in marriage. The mother said to her, all of you should settle yourself in Lagos. Don't come home because they already knew. So she was actually rejected. Nobody, nobody believed anything could come out of her. You know, the young man consistently and persistently, stubbornly went ahead with the marriage. You can imagine when you want to marry a woman and the woman was like, what you want to pay for? What you, part of the thing you are paying for? is not functional is not there and the guy was like don't worry and as i speak to you today i think their their children are up to three because miraculously that place i wouldn't know what god did of course we don't have to know what god did that place on its own you know got opened and this lady conceived bare children conceived again so that is what god can do now going coming back to the story of the pastor so when this journalist asked the pastor you said you were important as a child, but you are now married and have children. What happened along the line? He said, I was a deliverance pastor and at the same time working as information minister, Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, International Headquarters, Onike Yaba. One day after ministering at the deliverance ground, I returned to the information department. Two biological sisters came. One was about to return to the university. They wanted to meet with the pastor for prayers. I was the one on the ground. I prayed with both of them, especially the elder sister who was about to return to the university. But as they were going, I heard the voice of God say, the one at the back is your wife. The one at the back is your wife. The one at the back is your wife. So I quickly called them back to know where they came from. And I was told that they were from MFM House Fellowship in Akoka. In those days, you could not tell anybody that you wanted to marry a lady just because you had heard a voice. I had no right to go and tell her that is against the rules and regulations of the church. So I became a member of the MFM House Fellowship Akoka because of my wife.
Not long after, a house fellowship leader got admission to a higher institution, and since I was there as a member of that house fellowship, the church authority decided that I should take over from that fellow since I was a full-time pastor with experience in ministration. So I became a house leader even though I had been a pastor, an active pulpit pastor, but I loved that house fellowship because I knew that God spoke to me concerning the lady I was going to marry. I was close to her family being uh, a member of my fellowship and thank God the mother, a wonderful prophetess, one day called her daughter and said she dreamt that the house leader was going to be her husband. And so anytime he proposed to her, she should not reject him because of the anointing on him. This did not come to pass until after three or four years. Since I knew she was going to be my wife, I did something when she gained admission to higher institution. I took two of her passport photographs, went to the now defunct Intercity Bank to open an account on her behalf. Being a deliverance pastor, I made up my mind not to spend any money given to me by anybody. I would pay 10%, keep 10% to myself and save 80%. I began to save money for my wife to be. Eventually, when she left school, I presented the passbook to her in her living room in the presence of her parents. She checked it and apparently she had no idea of what I had done. Eventually, she realized it was a bank passbook. She saw 3.7 million naira saved in her name. She was very happy. That was the money she used to start the business that is running today to the glory of the God of Elijah. We were able to establish a business. We were also, by the grace of God, able to rent a three-bedroom apartment. We lived like a king and a queen to the glory of God and the business of my wife is still flourishing till today to the glory of God. Now, the main story of what happened, how, you know, was he healed? Uh, did they adopt the children? How did they manage to do it? Now, listen. But before I married her, I told her I was important. But she said she had prayed and to God and God had also confirmed that I was her husband and that there was nothing to worry about. I took her to Dr. D.K. Ulukoya, our father in the Lord, who also confirmed that to her. I told Dr. Ulukoya and one Pastor Solomon Akiade the secret. These were the two people that were aware of my importance. Anyway, my wife said she was going to continue with the marriage, importance or not, since God said she should marry me. That is why Pastor Mrs. Olua Tonyoni is not just a wife. She is a God-given woman to my ministry and calling. So on the day of my wedding, I told the officiating pastors, Pastor Olaoye in particular, that I would not be able to continue with the wedding as I was having stomach upset and feeling uncomfortable. I pleaded with him to round off quickly. They quickly rounded off the wedding. We were to go to St. Fimbas, Fimbas School by Akoka College of Education. As of that time, the man in charge of that school happened to be my house fellowship member. Red carpet all over the place. The venue was free of charge, but I could not go for the reception because of the stomach ache. By the time I came to my house that day, my manhood came alive for the first time in the history of my life. God restored me, and today, to the glory of God, I am married to Pastor Mrs. Oluwatoni Oni and blessed with wonderful children. So, this is the wonderful story. You know, in that video, I was talking about knowing the will of God and being willing to do the will of God. When you do the will of God, God alone is the one that knows the best for you. Now, if this woman was so much concerned about her sexuality when she eventually get, got married to this man, now something she would have missed out, you know, the gift of God for her life. But like I said in that video that before, you want to ask God for his will. You must be ready, willing and ready to take whatever God gives to you. You know, physically, this man must be handsome. Physically, he was fit, but only him, you know, knew the fact that he was important. And you can understand what being important means. It is not that he was sterile. It was that his manhood could not function. The only functionality that his manhood had ability to do was to pass urine. Any other thing that the manhood could do was incapacitated now. But on the day of the wedding proper, as the woman continued faithfully following God as he led her, now what was missing came back in full force. Now the question is, I leave you to answer this question. Will you marry a man that told you that he was important? That is an answer. Would you allow your sister as a man 
or your friend, anybody related to you to marry an important man, even when they know that this is the case with the man. I want you to put in your, your comment in the comment section and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, I want you to understand that there is nothing God cannot do. The source of this story is the Punch newspaper. And I'm going to post the link so that you can read if you want to read in the description area of this video. God bless you. I'll be coming your way shortly, very soon. From me to you, Shalom.